Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2019 Jeep Cherokee in the Latitude Plus trim level. Now this one has been upgraded with the V6, as well as some other optional equipment added to the vehicle, which I'll detail all the features later on in the video. Let's go ahead and get started. This Cherokee is sitting on 225-60 Firestone tires wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a satin carbon finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Velvet Red. And this is the beginning of pollen season, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the color good. There's a little bit of pollen on it. It was clean just a little while ago, but the pollen is falling fast. But man, is this a fantastic color. When it's nice and clean and direct sunlight, it looks good. Okay, so you'll notice that they changed the front end. Basically everything from the doors forward and the doors back has been changed on the exterior. So you have the iconic uh, you know, seven slot grill with the chrome surrounds and the matte uh, portion there in the center as well as the bottom. All the exterior lights on this vehicle are powered by LEDs. So the fog lights are in a reflector housing and the headlights are in a projector. So your low and your high beams will be from that projector tube there. There's also a little bit of light that extends on the side as well. There's also an LED daytime running light accent, you know, swooping above the headlights there, just kind of giving a little bit of that um, earlier style still in the vehicle. Looking at the profile of the vehicle, it pretty much maintained that overall shape. Um, it has the, you know, protected surfaces around here uh, on the base of the vehicle, around the, the wheel wells, and also have the chrome around, kind of solidifying this piece of glass here and the, the pillars uh, in black and a flat black. Now the back glass has the privacy glass, but you can complete that by tinting the front glass as well. And it has the body, body colored handles as well as the uh, side mirror there with the turn signal indicator on it. And then you have the roof racks in a, uh, like a silver finish. This is what the key looks like and it's a proximity key. And you're able to, in this particular one, have the remote start, power, lift gate, unlock and lock the doors, and a panic button. So you have the Jeep name there, and a physical button, uh, physical key on the inside that you can take out if you need it. Uh, let's go ahead and push that panic button and see what happens. So for a smaller vehicle, it does have a strong horn, and it flashes the lights, of course. As long as you have the key with you, it could be in a pocket, in a bag. As long as it's within a close proximity of this door, you can push this button to lock the vehicle, or you can put your hand behind the handle, and it senses your hand position, it senses the uh, key being on the outside of this door, and allows you access. You also have a physical key location here on the driver's side only. Okay, so taking a look on the inside of the passenger side door, Pretty much all black except, except for the handle there, and then you have a kind of a gray gunmetal accent there. And some contrast stitching in a French design. The top portion of the door starting up here, all the way down is all soft to the touch, all the way down to here, and then you have the hard plastics. Uh, but this material is kind of like, the, like a Nerf, soft synthetic Nerf material. Then you have like a vinyl in here as well as the um, on your armrest, very soft too. And you have a pocket right here with a little rubber um, floor that you can take out and clean and put it back in. You also have another one, put some change or whatever. And then you have your bottle holders and storage compartments here. So you have manually adjusted seats here for the passenger side, but it does have a height adjustment, with this lever right here. So that's a nice add for a passenger. Now these seats appear to be a vinyl here on the sides with the cloth in the center portion and it has that blue contrast stitching just like on the door. And very comfortable, very comfortable seats. In my opinion, the bolstering is nice, not too intrusive or anything. 
plenty of leg room. So I have the seat all the way back just to give you an idea of what's here. Uh, I will put all the specs and measurements in the description, but just to give you an idea here, you can see there's a little bit of tapering there, but not much at all. It's just kind of wide open space. Then you have a little basket or, or net pocket right there on the side. Soft touch dash, it's that same Nerf type material. Locking glove compartment. Opens up and it is massive. So you have this little portion right here, but look how far it goes. Way back in there and it's flat. So you can put a stack of books in there if you wanted to. The inside of the back doors have that same soft touch surface from here all the way down to here. And then you have the hard plastics storage pocket here as well as here. The back seat is a bench seat with the latch system for car seats or ISOFIX. This one actually says ISOFIX on the little tabs there, which is usually a uh, European term. And then you have the uh, pocket there on the back of the front seat on both sides. And now the seat all the way back, you can see there's still a little bit of leg room there. It's not completely closing off all the leg room. I mean, I, I'm six feet tall and I can sit here. A little bit of a hump there on the center portion and vents for the climate control. But just below there, you'll see it has USB ports and an AC adapter. Now you'll notice that cover actually has a rubber seal. So when you close that cover, it seals up those USB ports. So that way they don't get dust and dirt in them and uh, you know, eventually too dirty or too much dirt in there to, uh, you know, might cause problems or whatever. So this armrest with cup holders, you can move it out of the way in case you need a center passenger. And these seats do fold down just in case you need to add to your cargo space, which I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, so I moved the front seat up just slightly and you see you increased a little bit more leg room, uh, but I have to do that in order to lower the seat. So there's a lever right there, just pull it and it folds down like so. So you can add to your cargo space while still maintain some passenger space on the other side. Same with the other, same thing with the other side. I could fold that side down and leave this side up, whichever. The fuel door is here on the passenger side. And to open it up, you just push right there. And it's a capless design, so you don't have to worry about a cap. Now there is a funnel that you'll need to use the gas can, but typically you just put the nozzle in there and pump the gas and you don't have to worry about a cap. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, you can see the roof rails there. Now I notice it has this little place for an antenna. I don't think it has been installed yet. It's a place right here for the antenna to screw in. And it's probably just a little, little tiny thing. Then you have the third brake light right there, powered by LEDs. All the, the rear uh, lights back here are all LEDs. So you have this glowing light in the bottom and then the turn signal is LED as well as the reverse light. Backup camera is in the very center position right there, which is nice. Parking sensors across the back, across the back bumper. And you have the dual exhaust tips. Or I should say, they're more surrounds. The tips are actually within those surrounds, protecting the bumper cover. Okay, so the power lift gate, we can put, there's a button under there, but we can go ahead and use the key. Let's use the key this time. So we just double tap right here and it'll go right up for us.
Now I didn't notice any, uh, it's not a lot of Easter eggs, so this one doesn't have anything in the gla rear glass that I noticed. And there's very, very few Easter eggs in this particular vehicle. I was kind of a little bit disappointed at that, but uh, anyways. So here's your cargo space. Now, if you have all the seats occupied with passengers, um, then this is your cargo space. So this is really, really good. And like I said, I'll put all the actual measurements and everything in the description. You can cruise through all the specs and get all the details if you want it. So you have little hooks right here, tie downs, storage space. <clears throat> Even has a place for a shade to, to be attached if you want to add that. Now you notice there's lights on both sides, which is nice. And then you have a 12 volt power supply with a key, which will turn on and off with the ignition. That's what the key means. And then you have bag holders there, tie downs, storage space on this side. And you can see the, uh, the anchor points for the latch system for the car seats across the back, three of them. Lifting this up is more storage space. There's that funnel, in just in case you need that, use a gas can. Now this actually, if I pull it out and let it drop and push it back and let it down, this lowers the floor basically. So that way I can, you know, have a taller space if I need to. So that's one of the features. You can also flip it upside down. It has like a very durable uh, vinyl type material on the other side. Uh, you can also lift it up and then you can hook it. So there's a hook there and you just hook it up here to get it out of your way while you're axing, accent, accessing the spare tire and tools. So this one, it's an option. The spare tire is an option. So if you're buying or looking at one of these vehicles, uh, make sure that you look back here and see if you're buying a vehicle with a spare tire and be aware. It's not a big deal if you choose to buy it without, but just be aware of what you have. Okay, so you'll notice that the split is right here on the seats and I can fold down this seat or the other one to add to my cargo space while still maintaining passenger or I can fold down both of them and get this massive space back here, cargo space. To lower the power lift gate, I can of course use the key or I can just push this button and step back. The side mirrors have these little triangles in them and they will illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. So this is your uh, blind spot monitor system. They also serve as the rear cross traffic alert system. So if there's a vehicle coming from either direction as you're bark uh, backing out of a parking space, it will alert you as well. The sensors for those are back here in this rear panel right here, not in the metal portion, but here in the, uh, the plastic portion basically. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, or just, just sitting here in the console. Uh, you put your foot on the brake and push this button to start it. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat hooks in place keeping it from moving and there's the accelerator and brake pedal and a footrest on here on the left side which is pretty much a must for me that's that makes a, a long trip a lot easier so let's take a look under the hood to open the hood there's a latch just about here in the center portion right here actually it's a little bit to the right so you follow this line it's right in there and then you pull it towards you and lift up and you get to a certain point it goes up the rest of the way by itself you can actually see the latch here you just squeeze it like so so it has an insulated hood and seal basically across the whole portion there all the way around one continuous seal going up and over and around and then you have a seal uh, going across the back. So this helps with the airflow as well as noise coming from the engine. So the engine compartment, you have an insulated firewall. The strut towers are braced in to the structure of the vehicle. 
insulated battery. A little bit of insulation here, that's mostly for uh, sound, soundproofing the cabin. So you notice it's only there against where the cabin is. It has the Jeep symbol there with the kind of like the old military type of Jeep. So you notice it's a covered up with plastic. But anyways, um, underneath this big plastic cover is a 3.2 liter uh, V6, Pentastar V6, and it's paired to a nine speed automatic transmission. So I'll put all, this, all the specs and all the details, the gear ratios, all that stuff in the description so you can uh, dig into that if you'd like. So it's interesting about the Pentastar V6 this is true with 3.6 is the oil filter is right here. It's underneath this cover actually. Um, it might be easier just to remove this whole cover, but you can, has a little access hole there so you can get to it. The inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have your door lock controls, power window controls with your front tube, one touch down and one touch up. Side mirrors are adjusted here. These are heated side mirrors, by the way. So the driver always has a little bit more uh, features on the seat, typically. So this one's a power seat, so you can go up and down and tilt and everything. Um, but also it has the four-way lumbar adjustment. To the left of the steering column, you have your headlight controls, you have automatic on, parking and off. This button here is for your uh, fog lights. Interior gauge dimmer switch here, which also if you push it all the way up, turns your interior lights on. And this one is for your ambient lights. So you can, you know, it's like a dimmer switch for that. And then you have a, a button for your power lift gate, which you can control from sitting right here. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place here on the left side. And it's easy to find, but also you don't have to pull it down so much as you push it back and then forward like so. So it's pretty easy to operate. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. And I have the seat all the way back and tilted back a little bit further back, but um, this is probably where I would actually have to drive. I'm six feet tall and um, having the seat all the way back is just about perfect for me. Now it has the lumbar adjustments and all that stuff which is nice. Really soft and comfortable seats. Now I like the, um, the position and the angle of the footrest as well. So it's big enough, just big enough for my foot and I'm size 13 shoes so that's pretty good size. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel, it's a leather wrapped steering wheel and it has a smooth texture. There's cruise control here on the right side and also it has the volume for your radio on the back. So this is really handy. Once you get used to this, it's hard to go back. Now there's a lot of uh, Chrysler vehicles, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, uh, have this feature so the volume is up and down there's a center button uh, which will change through your audio source and on the back side of the steering wheel here you have up and down changing through your radio stations or your audio, audio track or whatever and the center button changes through your presets on your radio which is convenient okay so your voice recognition systems here and it's a very advanced voice recognition you can uh, change your radio stations you can send calls uh, if you have navigation, you can go to specific addresses or you can look up things. It's really good. And then your Bluetooth control here for answering calls and hanging up. These buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in a minute. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side for your front and rear. And your turn signals here on the left with your headlight dimmer switch. So looking at the gauges here, has uh, easy to read, has the big lettering and the non-reflective background. So the RPMs are there on the left side, speedometers on the right, but then you have these uh, digital portions in the center. So um, you can see the fuel gauge is low. It's going to the gas station shortly. Then you have your engine coolant temperature there on the left side. 
But here in the very center is a screen, customizable screen. You can get a lot of information from it. At the top is showing your fuel economy information, but you can customize that. So using these buttons right here, going to scroll down. So right now it's showing a digital speedometer in the center. If I scroll down, you'll see that was just part of a menu system. So that's number one. Number two is vehicle info, which it starts off with the tire pressure. Scrolling to the right, we get all kinds of temperatures and pressures, even the battery voltage. Scrolling down again goes to your fuel economy. So you have uh, the ability to, you know, see what the real, real time uh, fuel economy is, as well as your range and your average. Scrolling down again is going to your trip. Now your trip gives you the distance traveled, average of miles per gallon during that distance, and the time it took to travel that distance. You have two of them. You have trip A and trip B, so you can reset them individually. Scrolling down, this is whatever your um, stop-start feature is doing. So right now it's not ready to work. You can turn that feature off. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, basically, this feature turns off the engine to save gas while you're stopped for an extended period of time with the vehicle in drive and your foot on the brake. Scrolling down, um, this is showing what your radio is doing. Scrolling down again is stored messages. Screen setup, this is where you can actually change those things at the top. Let's go ahead and go uh, in here so we can go upper left. Let's choose that. So we can go range to empty, average uh, economy, uh, average so you have current fuel economy, average fuel economy, trip A, trip B. We can have a compass there, outside temperature, or the time. Scrolling down again goes back to your digital speedometer. There's the start button. Here on the dash, it is a soft touch dash. It has this portion here. Uh, that lifts up and you have a storage part compartment with a rubber lining okay so this is a seven inch screen touch screen but it operates just like the eight the eight inch screens so and it looks the clarity and the resolution is really good you have the icons across here at the bottom and uh, they stay there and you can you know quickly go to the one you want so right now we're in the radio which you have the am fm satellite radio options and then your presets there at the top are your favorites you can go to media which is your next icon uh, it says there's nothing available right now you can have to plug something in and it'll kind of pop up but um you have usb two us three usb ports uh, bluetooth and auxiliary input climate control driver and passenger temperatures which you can sync together, but typically they're separate. And then you have your, where you want the air to blow and your fan speed, and then your front and rear defroster, recirculate the air, all that good stuff. Now, when you put your rear defroster on, it will turn on your heated side mirrors as well. Apps, um, so you actually have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, capability. So once you plug in a particular, you know, that particular device, it will need to be plugged in and stay plugged in into the USB port in order for that to work but here's your other you know icons here that you can actually um, swap with the ones down here so let's say we want to see you have a compass there let's say we want to take the backup camera and move that down and replace the compass we can do that so now we have um, you know that option right there on the main screen or, or the main icons there so phone we don't have one paired, but once you pair the phone, of course, you can send and receive calls, and you can also um, transfer your call back to your cell phone if you want a private conversation. And then you can always check out the backup camera without being in reverse, which is nice. That's the one we, we switched. And then we have the settings here, which you can go in and, and adjust a whole bunch of different settings. So that gives you an idea of what the you know touch screen's all about. And it might be a little bit smaller than the, the other one, but it basically works the same way, which is good. I like the continuity. All right, your four-way flashers are there. You can turn your parking sensors off if you want to. And then here's some buttons uh, for your climate control, but you also have the volume knob, tune through the stations, mute the radio, you can turn the screen off, you can turn off traction control, and then there's the stop start off button. So you wanna get, get in the vehicle, you can turn off 
that feature so that way the engine runs the whole time you can do that when you get in the vehicle it will need to be turned on each time you get in the vehicle and start it up fan speed temperatures for your driver and passenger and there's some you know front and rear defrosters just some some quick uh, adjustments there for your climate control so you don't always have to go into the screen to do that okay so right in here is a 12 volt power supply with a key showing you that it turns on and off with the ignition then you have a USB and auxiliary inputs uh, for playing music through the sound system now there's a place right here it looks like you can take your cell phone and put it in there sideways so that way you can have it plugged in for the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay feature little storage space here and it has a rubber lining that you can take out and clean and put it back in okay so here's your shifter pretty good size and comfortable let's go ahead and put it in reverse now two things that will happen when we put it in reverse one is your backup camera now the backup camera does have the active guidelines so as I turn the steering wheel uh, it will turn those lines as well but the other thing that pops up is your parking sensors so not only will it give you an audible tone but it also give you an, an estimate of where the object is so you can kind of keep an eye on it on it but it will flash um, in the appropriate space behind the vehicle there there's neutral drive then it has a manual mode that you can change to the gears manually by bumping it like a ratchet shifter you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show the very top center of this little screen so I can always put it back in drive by just moving it back over to drive and it takes over changing the gears this is handy for downshifting typically okay so uh, this is your parking sensor I mean your parking brake sorry and it will um, it's an electronic parking brake and it locks the rear wheel so we pull it to turn it on it has a little indicator light and to release it put your foot on the brake and push it down that's how it works then you have illuminated cup holders here here's your armrest nice and soft and there's your stitching on the ends this lifts up in two portions so there's two latches here the top latch opens up a small portion with a rubber liner and it has places for wires to go in and out of this compartment uh, because if let's say you want to put your cell phone there or a device you can keep it there run the wires down in this area and you have a 12 volt power supply and a USB port so the 12 volt power supply has a battery showing you that it's directly connected to the battery of the vehicle so even with the vehicles off this is still active so you can charge your cell phone or a device while you're going to store you don't have to have the vehicle running to charge it off of the battery of the vehicle and there's places for wires to go in and out of this compartment as well here and there so it has an auto dim rear view mirror which you can turn that feature off by pushing that button you have some tap lights up here place to put your shades it has a felt lining so the visors have mirrors and lights looks like standard bobs there and a little clip it also has the ability to extend out and the home link garage door opener control is under here as well Okay, so looking at the visibility here in the back, uh, you can see there's plenty of glass to see out of. The headrests do get in the way a little bit, but um, they do kind of line up with the pillars too at this angle. But of course you can fold those seats down if they, to get them out of the way if you really want to when there's no passengers back there. But when you have passengers back there, they're gonna, you know the people in themselves might get in the way. Uh, as far as visibility that's why you have the blind spot monitor system rear cross traffic alert um, as well as the backup camera parking sensors all kinds of different things to help out with that as well all right so let's look at this window sticker so it starts off with the base price um, the basic information here the color and all that 
standard equipment. Now you have to use the, the pause button to read this most likely. Interior options. Exterior options. And then here's the optional equipment. So it has the safety tech group, uh, the comfort convenience group, and has the engine, also this compact spare tire is also another option. All right, there you have it, 2019. It's already a night, already 19 vehicles coming out. This is my first one. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville. And I'll see you guys next time.